This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Let's say you have a 12 hour clock that is mostly normal. It starts at 12 and as time goes on the hour hand and minute hand move continuously around the clock as they should and there's no second hand here. But this clock has an hour and minute hand that are actually the same length and thus they look the same. So the question is, just by looking at this clock, could you always determine what time it is? We are assuming we have infinite precision when we read this clock, and we also do not care about AM or PM, just the numbers. And no clever loopholes like waiting a few minutes to see which hand has moved more. Just in one moment, if you're given any clock configuration, would you know which is the hour and which is the minute hand? And if the answer to this is no, then the next question would be how many configurations are there where we can't determine the time? Because I mean right now, even though both hands look the same, I know it's 3 o'clock. Could be AM or PM, but I know it's 3, and therefore this must be the hour hand. Because if the other one were the hour hand, then we'd have an impossible clock configuration. Since the minute hand is pointing at the 3, then the hour hand should be a quarter of the way between 12 and 1. But as time goes on, can we always make that distinction? You'll notice when neither hand is pointing at a number, it's not immediately obvious which is the hour and which is the minute hand, or whether they're interchangeable and thus we cannot determine the time. If you want to figure this out on your own, here's your chance. There are multiple ways to arrive at the answer, I'm just going to show one, but we will build to that answer, I won't just say it. Okay, first of all, for any configuration on this special clock, if you look at it at any moment, there are two possible times. Just setting one hand as the hour hand, then doing the opposite. The only exception here is when the hands are pointing in the same direction, but ignore that for now. One of these times is valid for sure, like this one on the left is. But we need to find out whether the other one could be as well. Because if it is, and it kind of looks like it right now, just after 3.30, then we cannot determine the time using our special clock, because either hand could be the hour hand. So the real question here is whether there's a time or times throughout the day where I can switch the hour and minute hand and still get a valid time. To figure this out, I'm going to put back a clock with normal hands because we're going to represent times by coordinates. Wherever the hour hand is pointing, I'm going to call H, and for the minute hand, I'll call that M. Both of those numbers will assume values between 0 and 12, including 0, since the hands move continuously. If it's 3 o'clock, H would be 3, that's where it's pointing, and M would be 0. I could have put 12 since that is where it's pointing, but just pretend that number is a 0. It makes absolutely no difference, I just want the hour to start at something comma 0. So like 3 o'clock here would be 3 comma 0, hour comma minute. If it's 3.30, then H would be 3.5, since it's pointing at the spot halfway between 3 and 4. That's the important part of motion being continuous here. And then M in this case would be 6. So 3.30 would be 3.5 comma 6, and 3.40 would be 3 and 2 thirds comma 8. Now like I said before, the question is whether there's a valid time, or now we know coordinate, where we can switch the values, or where the hour and minute hand are pointing, and still get a valid time. Not too hard to see that the clock now does not yield a valid configuration. But finally, to see whether this applies to every time throughout the day, we're going to look at this on a graph, since each time can be represented with a coordinate. We'll let the x-axis be the hour hand, and the y-axis be the minute hand. And any time will lie in this region where the x and y coordinate are between 0 and 12. For example, 3.30 was 3.5, 6, so that would be right here. So now let's plot a 12 hour time period. At noon we'd have 0, 0, both hands pointing at 12. At 12.30 the hour hand would be pointing at 0.5 and minute hand at 6, so 0.5, 6 would be 12.30. 12.55 would be 0.917, 11. And since the clock moves at a constant speed, 
the first hour would be represented with this line segment here. That is 12 to 1. Then 1 o'clock starts back down here at 1, 0. 1 to 2 would then be this line segment. 2 to 3 would be this one. And this would continue for all 12 hours. So here is every possible time and clock configuration in a 12 hour period. Now remember how 340 did not yield a valid configuration when the hands were switched? Well that's because here's 340 at 3 and 2 thirds comma 8. And after switching the hour and minute hand or the x and y coordinates, we get a point that is not on one of those line segments, which are the only valid times. So this now isn't valid. But is there some point on the graph where we can flip the coordinates and have the new point still land on the graph? Well, switching the x and y coordinates will reflect the point over the line y equals x. That's how inverse functions work. Meaning if I flip all the times between 12 and 1, for example, invert this linear function, we get these clock configurations and we have our answer. These intersections are all times where switching the hour and minute hand still gives us a valid time, meaning we could not tell what time it is on our special clock at those moments. For example, this intersection here represents 10.04 and about 12 seconds. If I flip the hour and minute hand, we get a time on that first line segment, specifically at 12.50 and about 21 seconds. At those two moments, you cannot determine the time on our unique clock, because both potential times would be valid. Then if I invert all the times from 1 to 2, we get this line segment and 12 more intersection points. Inverting 2 to 3 gives us this. And if I invert the entire 12 hour period, we get all of these configurations and 144 intersections. Those tell us when it is impossible to determine the time on a clock with an hour and minute hand that look identical. So as a few more examples, 236 and 713 would be indistinguishable on this clock. Same with 447 and 924. 151 and 1009. 'and several more. All these are pairs of points that have inverted x and y coordinates which are still valid. The only thing to realize is that of these 144 intersections, 12 of them lie on the line y equals x when the hour and minute hand are facing the same way. So we definitely know those specific times without knowing which hand is the hour and which is the minute. But the 132 other intersections tell us there are 132 moments in a 12 hour period where you could not determine the time on this clock. So feel free to include your shorter and better solution down in the comments. I really like the visuals of this one though, so that's why I talked about it. And if you enjoy math puzzles just like this one, you can find a lot more over at Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. For example, their Joy of Problem Solving course comes with a bunch of puzzle categories such as logic, coin rearrangements, and matchstick puzzles that'll test your problem solving abilities where you also don't need much advanced math to get started. For those who are higher level, they have their contest math series that comes with puzzles involving combinatorics, modular arithmetic, probability, and plenty more. One thing I've noticed is that Brilliant is great at introducing less common math puzzles and applications, so no matter what your level, you're likely to come across something new. And if you want to get ahead for the next semester or just brush up on some old math topics, you can jump into courses such as vector calculus, differential equations, group theory, and plenty more. Also the first 200 people to sign up by using the link below or by going to brilliant.org slash Zachstar will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. And with that, I'm going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.